In the decade following the Civil War, people of all creeds and colors were part of the West. The following is a story about two of those people. 400 rump busting miles just to say howdy to some grocer and his six kids. You said that about eight times today. You know what the likelihood of there being two Frank Thomas culling courts out here? About the same as my throwing in with you the next time you say there's some man out in Arizona named Calico worth a thousand dollars. Ain't nobody proud of you. It was 200 miles, not four. 200 miles coming out here and 200 miles going back makes 400 miles. The more I think on it, the more I'm convinced there got to be a better line of work. Look at that. Sir. Got both special deputies. That's Pima, ain't it? Nothing else but. Well, what would Pima want with a load of prisoners? Beats me. We drove them off, though, before they, before they get to them. The beer's still cold? Not on a day like this. What are you, woofers, uh, prospectors, or what? Uh, it'll take me better part of an hour to explain what he is. And as for me, I'm ten kinds of a fool to be caught in the same territory with him. He gets like that when he's hungry, or he loses a bounty. Hey, you bounty hunters? That's right. Well, where's your badge? Don't need no badge. All you need is a slow mind to get in it and a fast hand to stay. That beer ain't getting no colder. Hey, now! You tell that bartender now that uh, the beer's on me. And then you come in and you talk to a major Zoll. He just might be able to put some money in your jeans. Well, we would run them back ourselves, but with the marshal away and the Indians cutting up, we need our full complement here. You understand? You mean the whole parcel of me worth but $350? Well, they're not worth anything in the sense that you mean. You see, Claymore County pays $50 for every suspect that's delivered to Judge Stockton's court for trial. Guilty or not? Oh, it doesn't make any difference. It's cash on the barrel head. However, you've got to get them there by the 17th, because, you see, Judge Stockton then leaves and moves on. We wouldn't chase a man over a hill for $50. We just chased over a lot of hills for a heck of a lot less. Now, the way I see it, you fellows are experienced at handling prisoners. Well, you're headed for Claymore anyway. Why not get paid for it? Like those two special deputies got paid? Ah, uh, we haven't sighted hostiles east of Sherry Springs. Come on, I'll let you take a look at them. Up here in the top bunk, Limey Austin, assault and battery. And the lower one, Al Redbeard, scalp hunter. There on the floor, Happy Jack, no last name, poisoner. Standing, Hale Hands Montaigne, card cheating attempted murder. In the top bunk, Miguel Otero, cattle thief. Senores, buenos dias. In that corner, Carl Wentz, murder. And down here, Thornton Kid Kime, gunfighter. Not the famous Kid Kime. Chucked up quite a tally in Oklahoma, didn't he? Yeah, counting the dogs and the old men. Come on. Get up and turn around, Kime. Oh, will leave and be sergeant. You've seen one back shooter, you've seen them all. I don't know, Major. <laughs> I just don't feel like riding herd with the likes of them for 10 days. Sure do appreciate the offer, but we'd make better time cutting through the hills. Kid, I'm gonna teach you a 
You buck long odds, kid. Well, it was worth a try. I got rattlesnakes and sheep killing dogs and rabid skunks in my tally. And I yet to get me a lippy. I don't know about Corey there. But speaking for myself, it'd give me great pleasure to deliver these people to Claymo for you. Good. Good. The longest 200 miles you ever saw, black boy. when move gets his skull cracked. Look how sharp that is. I would have done the job if he'd have got to him. What do you want with his scalp? I wanted to choke him with it. This pig, he takes the hair from my people and sells it for Indian scalp. I'm not saying that you don't have that coming to you. But I no sooner let you scalp him this side of Claymore as I would light a cigar with a $50 bill. Now get inside and behave yourself, or one of you is gonna walk. Apache be doing this far east. It might not be Apache. They the hitters on the flats. They like that kind of ground. At least the ones I know. Might be, uh, might be Pima again. Hey, Wentz? Why would Pima be following us? Well, you better check your manifest there, Marshal. You'll find out quick enough. Read what it says there about Wentz. Carl Wentz, 38, occupation minor, charge murder. Did kill his wife in a most brutal fashion. He dragged her at the end of a rope. <laughs> young she was, too. Oh, me yours. And the young have a scheme like Saturn. I paid three stout horses for that kid. But she tries to slip back to her tribe the next day. So I just helped her along. Was she Pima? Yeah. She was Pima. Do you think those Indians are Pima? I'll tell you better, it's up. 
They're not Apache. So the odds are they're Pima. Right? Probably. Since the Pima are not noted for their aggressiveness, we must conclude that they followed us for a particular purpose. I don't mean to be uppity, mister. But you wouldn't be slithering around as saying that since the Indians want wince, we ought to turn them loose. In the interest of the majority. You just thinking about your lily white skin and that's all. At least I'm thinking. That makes sense. Well, I don't see it. Well, maybe you would see it if you weren't blinded by his lily white skin. I ain't blinded by nothing. Just ain't gonna sit around while the quality folks talk about what to do with my money. Your subaltern here is obviously not familiar with the fable about the greedy monkey who couldn't get his fist out of the cookie jar until he had released one of the cookies. You know what you can do with your cookies. I say, uh, I say get rid of him before he gets us all killed. Well, what about it? Now, forget the idea came from him. I say it's up to Wentz. Wentz. If you do make it to Claymore, you're gonna hang for sure. Now, maybe if you try to make a break for it, you might get through. I wonder if he'll live to make it. You give me the loan of your horse? <sighs> Seems like since the idea come from your side, the horse should too. $50 prisoner and a $2 blanket. Now get out of here before I change my mind. Ha! Ow! Well, still got six cookies left. Creek that they're smelling. Horses have a nose for water. Seeing that to make me feel good on yourself. I'd sure hate to have to outrun them in this region. Hey! 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 Come on, Rico. Come on, Rico. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. Hold on now. We'll get that off. Hold on. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Ah. No. <laughs> I don't mean he didn't make it. I'd say that is exactly what it means. Looks like they treated him the same way. He treated his wife. Six months. 300 will buy a lot more. If you want to cut out, you can. Ain't nobody out here stay here, at least way it's been. Oh, I didn't bring you this far to let you pick up all the marbles. Well, I'll throw you back in Cibolo. I take these people in myself. I don't remember asking you for help. Without it, you'd be crew bait right now, along with the rest of them. Yeah. the rim, fire it, and sweat it back on again. <laughs> it's the only way. 
You're going to Claymore anyway. You might as well get paid for it. Track, man. You got a little enough time now, son, without hiring it none. Now end that over here. Look around you, boy. Because you're going to spend eternity right here. Then let's get on with it then. Bonnie Man's Edge. But the other one works just fine. Point a gun at me again, you hear, boy? killing the accident. Maybe. Or oh, whatever. It's no great loss. Oh, tell him. Well, to you, maybe. Fifty dollars is fifty dollars. No, I'm not one to throw good money after bad. But don't you tempt me. Now you dig him a grave. You are too good to him. I said dig! I'm next. Well, according to my figures, Mr. Montaigne, it's your turn to ride, too. Well, let me know when you change your mind. I wouldn't wait on him, 
changing his mind. Oh, that breed of cat. It'll take more than a walk in the hot sun to change his spots. Why don't you invite him up behind you? Then you and him can talk about the good old days. Well, those days do look good from here. of your better bourbon, innkeeper. The first place, I'm a station master. Second place, we've only got one kind of whiskey. And the third place, who's paying for it? My pleasure. Okay with you? He pays for it. <laughs> we've still got games. I play a superior game of poker, sir. I don't cheat. <laughs> it's funny, that bloke in Tucson didn't see it exactly that way. <laughs> That's why he got shot. Someone who don't have to stack a deck, you sure got pretty hands, gambler. Family trait, sir. Oh, these poor hands. They couldn't handle a woman, much less a car. Are you buying for everyone? Very well, everyone. A shot. You, sir, would be more aptly described as a highwayman. Drinking, Mr. Carr? Maybe later. Gentlemen, to Judge Stockton, may he in his infinite wisdom have mercy on our souls. I ain't got my soul yet. Justice McDonough, and my niece, Miss Brown. Justice? Uh, for a moment, I thought that you found a rose in the desert. You and your niece traveling alone, Justice? Well, yes, the poor child became my ward recently at the uh, untimely death of her parents. How oh, nice. Oh, um, will you be able to put us up? Well, this is a way station, not a hotel. But if you ain't too fussy, Miss Brown, we might work something out. Well, I don't want to inconvenience anybody. We are all at your service, ma'am. Allow me to introduce myself. I'm Randolph Wentworth Montaigne, of late from New Orleans. He's also a prisoner. So are these other folk. You'd best keep your distance. I'm sure he meant no harm. Got an arm across your throat. This knife at your back, you'd be singing a different tune. You were thorough enough. You all right? I'm sorry. Come sit down. Okay. You ever been in Abilene, Miss Brown? No, we didn't come that way. I was talking to Miss Brown. I've never been in Abilene, no. There's a little girl down there in the Longhorn, spitting image of you. <laughs> well, I guess the good Lord gave us all our lookalikes. Are you sure we never met before? Put your little foot, put your little foot, put your little foot right there. Put your little foot. You heard the lady. Your... The wildest little filly I ever knew. Uh, you care to join us, Justice McDonald? Well, thank you. I, uh, I don't imbibe. 
And the dog ain't got fleas. I tend to one that's why they run him out of town somewhere. I think that considering the length of your voyage, sir, you could make allowances. Well, just one, then. I, <coughs> I seem to have picked up a little cough out there. You almost got yourself shot. Who are you after? Blimey. Blimey! You come all this way to get me back? I can't mend fences, slop pigs, churn, and keep house all by myself. Too much for one person. Well, you might have thought of that then before you went running off to the marshal. Is she the one that you did maliciously and willfully assault with intent to do great bodily harm? Oh, well, I don't know as I uh, intended to do her any great bodily harm. I mean, I, I, I'd had a few, and she was giving me a lot of jabber, and, uh, well, you know how those things are. He didn't mean nothing by deputy, but Lime is a good man, really. <laughs> he must be. Anyways, I'm willing to let bygones be bygones, and be much obliged to you if you'd just turn him loose and let us get on our way. Well, I'm not sure we're authorized to do that, ma'am. You would ride on to Claymore with us, drop the charges there. Oh, well, it's not as simple as that. See, when the marshal come out to our place to get Limey, he... Well, he spotted one or two things that folks had reported missing, and... Oh, they'd put him in jail for stealing. Well, uh, it was nothing very big, mind you. It was only a... Uh, a bucket that was used for weaning the calf, and a, a harness that would hang in an old man's shallot's farm for, for five years, doing nobody no good. And that pump was worthless until Limey put new leather in it. Well, look, I'm sure if you explain all this to Judge Stockton, he'd be very lenient with you. Don't you think so? No, well, he'd be out in no time at all. Well, I guess I could make do for a while. 
But with the baby coming and all, I... What? Is baby in foal again? No. I am. You damn fool. Cora! Why don't we let him go? Have you no romance in your hearts? You got horses? Well, yeah. Babe's out in the trees. We rode her double more than once. Well, you're gonna have to make your own explanations to the marshal. Oh, I really do appreciate this. Say, if you're ever out Cutter Creek way, I make real fine chicken and dumplings. I'll keep that in mind, Mrs. Austin. No, call me Cora. I'm not really Mrs. Austin. Yet. Turns out the gent who married us wasn't any more preacher than I am. Now, Limey's promised, as soon as we find us a rightful preacher, we're gonna get ourselves hitched. Ain't that right, Limey? Uh, well, uh, let's be on our way, then, before these gents have a change of heart, shall oh, we? Oh, no, you don't, Limey. Now, we might just have somebody here that can tie that knot real good. Shake up the justice. Well, how'd you know we ain't some snake oil drummer or something like that? Why don't you ask Miss Brown? He was a justice. And she's a little Bo Peep. Wake up! Wake up! Are you what you say, y'all? The justice of the peace? That was the justice of the peace in Mesa for six years. Why ain't you now? Could be the town fathers don't approve of their justices taking in nieces as their wards. Can you marry someone or not? Well, I can until my term of office expires, providing we're still in Claymore County. This is Claymore County. Are you gonna marry Limey? Well, congratulations, Limey. Well, where's the bride? Right here. <laughs> I didn't expect to be getting married tonight, or I'd have sure worn something nicer. I've got something you can wear. I don't expect I'll be wearing it anymore. You. Black boy! Anybody move, get shot. Anybody. All right, Corey. Reach it out two fingers, real slow. Drop it. And the rifle. Now kick it over here. Everybody on the wall. You stay, black boy. Oh, well, well. What was that you said about uh, pointing a gun at you? Ask your question, I'll get it right. Stay! I said, don't ever point a gun at me again. <laughs> oh, there was more. Now, you still feel that way about it? If you live to be 90, which you won't, you'll still be a boy traveling in a man's world. Now, you aren't going to be around here that long to find out, but I must change your mind about a few things right now. Back up. You mean you planning to give me a crack at you? No, I wouldn't have it any other way. My son, I think you better give me that gun. You're gonna spoil the wedding. Shut up. You're next. Uh, listen, kid, if you don't mind, I catch one of the horses out there and... Don't move, Max! And everybody to see this. Claymore. If the stove up or anything, it'll cost you more. And five dollars for the ten goods.
I'll say one thing. We ain't had a night like last night in the three years that have been here. Shooting and a wedding to boot. <laughs> you did lie me no favor, senor. You gave him one chain for another. That leaves $140. Did you forget the five for the food? Or is that supposed to be my party? Yeah, party. Well, it was your idea that got us into this mess. You had to let that kid get in your crawl. He ain't there no more. Hey, that's another thing. You're getting him off your back cost me money. You could have called a side pocket shot or something. You didn't have to hit him dead center. Are you sunstroke or something? That boy was fast. It's lucky I'm alive. Well, we can argue about that all day. Otero's action as a criticism of my cooking, and I say that we have a new cook. <sighs> Sounds fair enough to me. What do you say, Jamal? Yeah, you can handle that decision, Mr. Corey. Oh, since the subject has come up, uh, let me tell you that I have never eaten wood cotton balls, but I am positive that they will taste something like your biscuits. And if I pour swamp water over a hatful of dead beetles, it will be much better than your coffee. <laughs> Happy Jack, you're a lucky man. You can complain about the cooking all you want. Nobody's going to ask you to cook. How'd you poison those wranglers? Food poison. They had it coming. What'd they do? Was no one thing. They'd loosen my saddle so I'd fall. I'd find snakes in my blanket. Sometimes just after I'd straighten out my chuck wagon, they'd spook the horse. Take me two or three hours to get it straightened out. I'd keep smiling. That ain't how I felt, not a bit. So one day, put wolf poison in the grub. Just enough to make them good and sick. I'm sure Judge Stockton will take all that into account. Sure he will. Well, he could have quit, couldn't he? Being able to quit takes a little getting used to. Come on, Happy Jack, let's get some wood. Your favorite field hand, Master Corey? You afraid that Mr. Randolph Montaigne's gonna soil his hands? Well, you've already taken care of that, haven't you? Come on, let's go. Wait a minute. You stay here and talk to your friends. Come on, Happy Jack. We'll go get the wood.
Happy Jack. He's gone. Where the hell were you? Gone? You mean you let him get away? I didn't let him get away. He about killed me. Yes, I can see that you're at death's door. I'll bet if you had pale hands out there with you, you wouldn't let him get away. Are you saying I turned him loose? I'm saying I know how you blacks stick together. Git. What are you doing? Ain't it plain enough I'm turning your white gentleman friend loose? Oh, no, you're not. Half of him is mine. I'm turning my half loose. The rest is your problem. I'm free to go? Just follow the Timberline north. You'll cut Vickers' trail. Now get out of my sight. Ah, uh, Mr. Corey, you, you're a gentleman of breeding and compassion. Product of a dying era. Yeah, yeah, so are you. Now get out of here. Mr. Corey. Gentlemen, let me explain about the cattle that I supposed to have taken. Just when hush I... up and dish out the food. Can goods left. Figure he's worth the net at thirty-two fifty. That's sixteen twenty-five apiece. Be considerably more if you hadn't started throwing away fifty-dollar bills last night. Yeah, we'd had a lot more money if you wasn't such a suspicious person. Uh, gentlemen, I will give you twice the money you're going to get from me if you forget the whole thing. I have to owe you the money, uh, but I'm a man of my word. You can ask anybody in Sonora. Except the ladies, of course. You forget it, Otero. We're gonna have something to show for this ride. And you're it. to now, Taro. Uh, stomach. Maybe it's those red peppers you eat. Uh, no. No, this morning, when we broke camp, I took Happy Jack's things. He wasn't coming back. Uh, so I, I took some jerky. Oh, oh, it's cold. You better get him a blanket. Applications are set in. Now, drop your gun. Right there. Move. Oh, please, my friends, don't feel bad. Miguel Otero is the greatest horse thief in the whole territory. With me, it's not a profession. It's an art. Adios. about $15 a piece around figures. That'll buy a lot of beer and, uh... Well, we got you here with about an hour to spare. Sorry about this, Otero. Nothing personal, you understand. Just worked out that way. Oh, don't feel so bad. It's a job. It's not a job that I would do. Somebody has to do it. Huh? This 
is all that's left of seven prisoners? Uh, <laughs> yes, sir. Well, what happened to the others? Well, various things, um, uh, Indian attacks and escapes and... A <laughs> guard, thing like that. Um, you two are pretty green at this work, I gather. Our first time. Well, I, um, I don't think you're cut out for it. Oh, which one's this? Uh, Otero, Miguel Russell. Miguel Otero? Yes, sir, Your Excellency. Well, it seems you salvaged the wrong one. Uh -oh. How's that again, sir? This came three days ago from John Chambers. He's dropped all charges against Miguel Vasquez Otero. Who's, who's John, John Chambers? Chambers? John Chambers is the rancher whose cut light uh, I didn't. Uh... Nonetheless, he isn't pressing charges. Mrs. Chambers, a, a lovely lady. She probably spoke in my behalf. Well, now, wait a minute. But that major told us that we'd be paid for them prisoners guilty or not as long as we delivered them. Delivered for trial. But there are no charges against this man. He's a free citizen. So, if there's no further business to transact, I have a stage sketch. Well, that's the way things go sometimes. So let's turn in the horses and be on our way. To show you there's no hard feelings, let us treat you to a drink. Hey, that's very good. Thank you very much. You are my friend. Mm, I sure could, too. You got the price of one? No. You? No. I don't guess we're gonna find it in this game. Come on, man. The drinks are on me. Yeah, fine. What's the occasion? Oh, ain't you heard about it? I got myself a wanted man. Who's that? Miguel Otero, cattle thief, worth $350. Who's gonna pay that for him? The Cattlemen's Protective Association of Navidad County. I caught him bathing in front of the courthouse and got the drop on him. He's over at the jailhouse right now. So who's going to take him back to Navidad? I am. It's only about a three-day ride from here. Is that all? Just three days? <laughs> What's so funny? Son, I won't go spending my heart on money just yet. An awful lot can happen in three days. <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 